Welcome back. Independent investment expert Roger Montgomery joins me now with his views on Telstra's earnings result and how to reveal, or how to reveal, or and to reveal how his A1 quality rating portfolio actually performed. Okay, mate, great to see you back. It's nice to be back. Yeah. Now, I believe we might have a table problem, but still, yeah. you and I can get through we'll it. We'll work through it, I have no doubt. Okay. Before we look at the, the portfolio, yes. let's just quickly look at the Telstra result today. Yeah, not, a, not a great result, no. obviously. Profit down. 34. Yeah, profit down quite a bit. Yeah. Um, but, but remember, I like to invest longer term, so yeah. an individual result's not as important as what I think the long-term trends for the business are. Yeah. Um, and if we go backwards, and I admit that you're not supposed to invest looking at the rearview mirror, mm. but if we go backwards, the profit today and last year is lower than it was 10 years ago, mm. despite a massive growth in the take-up of mobile phones in Australia, despite enormous and extraordinary growth in the internet penetration in homes and businesses in Australia and the usage of it, um, and also uh, enormous penetration uh, of uh, pay TV or subscription-based yeah. television uh, in homes in Australia, which didn't exist mm. 10 years ago. And despite that, the profits are lower than they were in 10 years ago. In dollar terms or in percentage terms? In dollar terms, yeah. they're lower. They're, in yeah. absolute terms, yeah. they're lower. Yeah. So I guess it was more a monopoly 10 years ago, so is it a print Well, print arguably, money? I mean, arguably, it's been, it's been argued it's a monopoly all through this 10 years, but what I don't see is I don't see evidence in the numbers of a monopoly. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, so I, you know, this, this, is, this has been a, a political football, obviously, yeah. the company, and it's had to open up its network to, to competitors. Uh, and I think... I think what we've got in Australia now is a mature, a mature telecommunications market yeah. where pretty much everyone's got a phone, businesses are all connected, and really, if I gain a bit of market share, it's because you lose it. Mm. Well, um, well, we haven't got phones having problems. So yeah, we haven't got about. exactly. So, so Telstra gets up on its on its soapbox and says we've got a million new subscribers, and isn't that fantastic in the last six months? Well, yes, it is, but on a net basis, you know, the, we're just we're just sitting in a in a game of poker in a room, and we're just sort of passing around the best hand, yeah, yeah. and and that's all that's happening at the moment. Mm. Um, and I don't think that's going to change. What about eleven billion dollars? Will that improve the? Yeah, that'll be a one-off. Yeah. You know, it'll be but treated still as a one off. Yeah. <laughs> Even they get put in the bank at seven percent. <laughs> well that'll be better. That'll get them a better return than a, it's very expensive to fund that copper network. In yeah. fact, what they should do is they should sell the copper. Mm. Arguably, you know, with copper at record highs, they're probably You're get more for it. Yeah. Well they get four point three. <laughs> I worked out they get about four point three billion dollars yeah. um, for their copper uh, that's in that network. Yeah. Um, so so arguably they could they could do very well selling that. Okay. Um, but to be fair, if you look at the cash numbers today, the cash results. They reported a $3.4 billion operating cash flow, but what they do, which is not, it's not sneaky in any way, they're allowed to do it, but they, they put the interest paid on the debt down the bottom of the cash flow statement. They don't put it up at the top at the operating level. They put okay. it way down the bottom. So if you take that off, they actually had, a, I think, about $2.9 billion of operating cash flow. Um, from that, they've spent about $1.4 billion or thereabouts. They've paid dividends of $1.7 billion. Um, they've got a $200 million cash deficit after that. Mm. They've then spent about $450 million on buying uh, goodwill, buying other businesses. That was the goodwill component. Um, that leaves them with a deficit of about $600 million. They've got to fund that some way. They haven't issued any new shares. But guess what? They've borrowed another $900 million. Mm. And that helps fund that cash gap. Mm. Um, so arguably, it, you, it depends on how you treat it, whether it's a half glass full or a half glass empty. Um, they've funded the dividends again with some borrowings. Mm. Okay. So we'll actually we'll re revisit the Telstra story sure. you know, in a few weeks' time. Let's go and look at the, the portfolio that you suggest. We call it okay. the A1. We, we did. It yeah. was the 18th of November, yeah. I remember, yeah. and it was. And we did three things. We talked about some individual A1 companies, yeah. and we listed those. Yeah. Then we went through what I thought were the A1 businesses that were above their intrinsic value, slightly yes. above. Some of them were only a few percent. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then we looked at those that were below their intrinsic value. And then you asked me my hot pick for 2011. Mm. You asked what that was, mm. and I, I said it was matrix composite. Yes, yeah, right, matrix, yeah. Um, okay. yeah so, okay, let's go through the results. We okay. should have a table here, but for some gremlin reason, we don't. Right. But well, we no, can I describe. did my bit. You did your bit. I, did my, I, I said yeah, it to I, you. I, if it was a Roger Montgomery fault, I would actually specify that. <laughs> if it's our fault, it's a gremlin. <laughs> right. Okay, so what we got? Let's okay, go through so, the companies. So the A1 businesses uh, are, that we discuss generally, Platinum Asset Management, uh, Cochlear, 
Blackmore's, REA or realestate.com, yeah. M2 Telecommunications, Mineral Resources, DWS, uh, which is an IT yeah. business, Centibet, ARB, which is the man, the, we keep calling it the blokes. Yeah, the blokes, company, blokes, yeah. blokes company. Yeah, bull bars. Um, and bull bars yeah. and, that's exactly right. Yeah. And Oriton, bull bars and bastards. And Oriton, arguably not a man's company. No, um, definitely a uh, ladies' company. Uh, well, heading down, they've got wallets, and I, in fact, yeah. I have a wallet that's an Oriton wallet. Well, you should, after the promotion, you've given Sally in a business. <laughs> but anyway, so I just gave her another one, didn't okay, I? Yes, right. Yeah, okay. These so, are A1s. All right, are they? so. so Let's let's look at the changes. Platinum Asset Management is up 3.86%. Okay. Uh, Cochlear up 8%. Blackmore's up 2%, not that much. Uh, REA up 10%. Uh, M2 Telecommunications up 25%. I taught him. He, he was on my program this you week. You did say you liked him. Yeah, you? and he was a university yeah. student. Um, mineral Resources up 25%. DWS down 9%. Centibet up 12%. Uh, ARB up... 12%. 12%. Mm -hmm. um, ARB up 10%. Oriton up 12% for an average of up almost 10%, 9.81%. percent November. Compared, compared to the All Ordinaries Index, which is up 5.7%. Yeah, okay, okay. Um, so then, that... Uh, that so was just... We just talked yeah. about those generally. Yeah, OK. And, and that, yeah. That, that reinforces how brilliant Roger Montgomery is, doesn't well, it? Well, I think... Let me say this. Don't, I think, no, don't, I've been facetious. That well, was a good I, result. I wasn't going to acknowledge it. Um, <laughs> I actually think this the process of looking for great quality businesses yeah. and buying them when they're cheaper than they're worth yeah. works. Yeah. Now, I'm, I'm surprised And particularly it's when the so momentum well. goes your way, they're exactly. going to do the best because they, they, in a sense, have a good starting point. Their yeah. intrinsic value is higher than the market price. Correct. Okay. Um, all right. So then we went through a list of companies uh, that. Uh, were at slight premiums to their intrinsic value. Yeah. So let's have a look at how they went. Reckon up uh, almost 11%. Thorn Group, 26.5%. Mm. GUD, 1%. Fleetwood up 10%. What If, down 3.5%. Monodelphus up 18% for an average gain of 10.5% mm. compared to the all odds of 5.7%. And how did you rate, rate them? They, at that point in time, the intrinsic value was high. They were A1s. The market price, you, not... you wanted all my A1s, yeah. and so I went through those, and then I divided them up those that were above intrinsic value those that were below yeah but these weren't below by they a were lot. above they yeah, were slightly yeah, above yeah, the market price was above yeah, the intrinsic value they were above okay.